Hi, this is Tyler with Norlab, and today I want to talk to you about some of the challenges that we are seeing in the FF&E industry for laboratory casework. If you are an architect, a lab planner, a general contractor, or even an owner, I think you're going to find this useful as we discuss some of the challenges that we're seeing in the market, the risks that are associated with that, and then some of the things that we can do to work together to mitigate some of those effects. So grab a coffee, get ready, and here we go. all started with a small incident a little while ago and it's led to some issues with the commodity market that nobody really quite understood at the time and it's really kind of happening for a couple of different reasons. First is demand. Well, we were kind of anticipating that everyone's going to stay home and not spend money and not do some stuff. Well, surprise! We did the opposite. We all wanted shiny new things while we're trapped in our houses. So we bought appliances and cars and tried to build decks and fences and this all led in, in turn to some shipping issues as we tried to bring all this material across. Now we've got all the containers in North America and none in China where they're supposed to be. And that's led to material shortages and longer material lead times. This is all really leading to some additional risks that we haven't seen in the market before. We're seeing longer schedules as our manufacturers are trying to deal with sourcing that material. We're seeing things like COVID surcharges. Those same manufacturers are seeing supply and demand offsets where the costs for their raw materials are increasing at an exponential rate, sometimes anywhere between 30 to 100 or more percent. And because the manufacturers of those goods aren't exactly um, motivated to fix it right away, we don't really know when that's going to fix itself. Don't count on it! Oh! Ah! When we talk about when it's going to recover, nobody knows. Some people think it should be now, some people think it's a year from now, some people think the prices may never come back to what they were. So we have to be really careful about what we're talking about on those surcharges and how far we're forecasting and planning for them. What are some of the things we can do to mitigate some of these risks? We have to work together. So what I recommend is that you contact your favorite FF&E supplier and have a discussion about some of the things that we can do. So those are things like planning ahead. Normally, because FF&E is at the end of a project, we got brought into the end of the project for the procurement side, so way at the back end. But one of the things we can do is try to pull that procurement process forward to the beginning. And that allows us to do a couple of different things. It allows us to talk to our manufacturers and let them know, oh, you're going to have an order coming at this date, and they can pre-order the materials that you need to complete your project. It also allows us to talk to you about the surcharges and knowing when they're going to be produced, come to an agreement with our manufacturers on what those surcharges could be. And the second is just having as much open communication as we possibly can between your team, our team, and the end user. Things like talking about the schedules on when material is going to be required on site. Are you seeing delays? What do we think the surcharges are happening? And what happens if we push those delivery of those products out further or bring it in sooner? And then there's always going to be this talk about a redesign. And we have to be careful when you talk about redesign. Laboratories and healthcare facilities are these high demand, high performance environments when we talk about furniture. And there are things that we have to think about like intent and performance. And there are some resources that we can use to help us with that conversation. One of is CIFA, the Scientific Equipment and Furniture Association. It helps us define some of the performance requirements of those goods. And we're going to talk about that in the next episode. Doing a redesign and substituting material isn't necessarily going to be the best result because it's a multi-level material problem. We're talking steel, aluminum, stainless steel, phenolic resin, the sand that goes into epoxy resin. All of these things are affected. And if we try to just take a standard piece of millwork or casework not rated for that environment and put it in there, in the end we're just going to affect what our customers are doing, some of their safety requirements potentially, and the return of investment on that goods. Congratulations! You made it to the end and hopefully are still awake. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please note that our sources are going to be linked in the description. We would love to hear your comments on this video or any future video topics that you'd love to see. Please like and subscribe. And until then, we'll talk soon.